कॉन्सेप्ट नंबर नाइन फ्यूचर्स प्राइस लिमिट इन केस ऑफ फ्यूचर्स देयर इज अ कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ प्राइस लिमिट बैंड विच मीन्स बियॉन्ड अ सर्टेन प्राइस पॉइंट द ट्रेड्स कैन नॉट हैपन ऑन दैट पर्टिकुलर ट्रेडिंग डे द ट्रेड्स हैव टू फॉल विद इन दिस प्राइस रेंज ऑनली दिस इज टू कीप अ चेक ऑन द फ्लक्चुएशन लेवल्स इफ देयर वेर नो सच कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ प्राइस लिमिट देन देयर कैन बी अ हैवॉक अ डिजास्टर इन द डेरिवेटिव मार्केट्स Yes, there would be infinite losses on a particular trading day. So, to avoid such situation, these price limits have been imposed. So, very simple. There is a limit up. The upper limit is called the limit up, which means that once the price of the security, once the price of the instrument reaches this level, then at that point the trading will stop, and there will be no trades until and unless someone agrees to. buy or sell at a price below this point okay not even at the trading level even if someone is placing a uh, an order at this particular level then there will be no orders ex- being executed one has to place an order below this level for the orders to get executed similarly for limit down this is the lower limit of the price band beyond which the prices cannot fall and if there is a order beyond this point then this order will not get executed even on this price limit there will be no orders executed one has to uh, place an order above this limit for the orders to get executed and then there is lock limit lock limit means a situation that that the trades cannot take place because of a limit move that means either up or down when there are no orders within this range then it is a situation of lock limit that means all the orders are either the upper limit or below the lower limit and there are no orders placed in between the price limit and in such situation there is there are no trades taking place on the exchange concept number 10 open interest this is a very important concept from the practical point of view however in your curriculum this does not find uh, much importance so might not be very important for your exam okay anyway let's try to understand this open interest or oi this means the number of outstanding derivative contracts in the market outstanding derivative contract means let's say a and b enter into a contract then this is counted as one then again c and d enter into a contract then it is counted as one so this way when all the outstanding contracts are aggregated then the figure of open interest is derived what does this indicate it an increasing oi indicates that there is additional money coming into the market and when the open interest is reducing it means that people are closing their contracts and they and they are going out of the market taking away their money okay so this figure is very important to understand the mood of the market and then again people tend to confuse the concept of open interest with volume these two are different concepts and let us understand this with the help of an example a and b enter into a contract so this is one contract that means they are taking one lot okay one lot and uh, since this is a new contract so the buyer is opening a contract and the seller is also opening a contract this is their first trade so this is counted as one and oi is also one oi remember that oi is the number of outstanding contracts how many contracts are still pending in the market that is called outstanding however volume has nothing to do with outstanding this is a daily basis figure okay volume is computed daily however oi is a cumulative figure okay hope you got the point the oi is not going to zero the next day there is going to some remain some open contracts however the volume will become zero at the end of the day and the next day it will again start from one so moving on to the next contract then again c and d are also entering into a contract for uh, five contracts they are entering for five lots and since these two are also new players so both of them are opening the contract so this counts for five volume and the open interest is will now become six okay there was one contract between a and b and now five contracts between c and d so both 1 plus 5 add up to 6 as i said this is cumulative then d becomes buyer and a becomes seller now see that 
D was earlier a seller and now becomes a buyer. It means he is closing his contract. This is not a new contract. He is not taking a fresh trade. In fact, he is closing his position. Okay. Similarly, A who was a buyer in the first place is now selling. So he is also closing a contract. So both are closing in this case. And they are closing only one contract. So one will be your volume and your open interest will also reduce by one. Okay, so from 6 now it becomes 5. Then E is a new player and C is an existing player. C was a buyer earlier and now he is selling the contract. So C is closing this position. However, E is taking a fresh trade and they are doing it for 5 lots. E is opening a position. It is a fresh trade for him. However, C is closing the position. That means it is an existing trade. The volume is same as the number of contracts. However, you will see that in, in this case, the open interest does not change. Why? Because in this case, the all the five contracts are still there in the market. These have not been closed down. Earlier, it was between C and D. And now C has sold these contracts to E. So now these contracts are still there between E and D. The contracts have not extinguished from the market. These are still there. Only the hands have changed between C and E. Okay. That is why there is no impact on the open interest. This was an important point. And lastly, B who was earlier a seller is now becoming a buyer. So he is closing his position. And E, who was earlier a buyer, is now becoming a seller. So he is also closing his position. And both are closing their position for one contract. So your volume will be 1 and your OI, that is open interest, will also get reduced by 1. Since both are closing one contract. Okay. So this is the concept of open interest. Concept number 11, similarity between forwards and futures. Similarity is that they both can be deliverable or cash settled. Well, they both can be. However, uh, in various jurisdictions, we have seen that governments usually tend to keep the futures as cash settled only and not as deliverable contracts. So in some countries like India, futures are only cash settled. There are no deliverable futures. And secondly, both are priced in such a way that contract has zero value at the initiation. We will understand more about this in the next reading where we understand what is the value of a derivative and what is the price of a derivative. Okay, then you will be clearly understanding what does this mean. Anyway, just to give you a hint that zero value means that on the day of contract, when the contract is initiated, then both the buyer and seller are on a neutral position. No one is gaining and no one is losing on the day of the contract. This is the meaning of zero value at initiation. Concept number 12, difference between forward and futures. Futures are traded on exchanges. However, forwards are OTC instruments. These are not traded on exchanges. These are standardized and forwards are customized. Right? You sit with other party and determine the terms of the contract. Clearing house is the counterparty. In case of futures, you are dealing with the clearing house. However, in case of forwards, there is uh, the party which you are dealing with. That means whether you will actually receive the payment or not, that is dependent upon the counterparty. Futures are government regulated. Forwards are not regulated. These are unregulated and an informal market. In case of futures, there is no risk of default as there is a clearing house in them between. However, there are high default risk in case of forwards. In case of futures, we understood the concept of daily MTM settlement. That is the your gains and losses are transferred to your margin balance on a daily basis. However, in case of forwards, there are no payoffs at the initiation or during the term of the contract, the settlement is done only at expiry. Futures are more suited for speculation. However, forwards are more suited for hedging. 
yes clearly understood for speculation purpose you are not going to make forwards because forward is a commitment you have to deliver the asset that you have promised but in case of speculation that is not your objective you just want to take advantage of the fluctuations so that is why futures is more suited for speculation than forwards then futures requires margins at initiation we understood the concept of initial margin and maintenance margin however there is no such concept in case of forwards and futures are generally cash settled as i already told you but these can be deliverable contracts also there is no uh, restriction in the theory however in case of forwards these are generally physically settled because forwards are usually entered by parties who actually want to deal in the commodity or the uh, asset they are dealing into